For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting Harry, True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. And we are Rooted Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Rooted Podcast. This week we have a very special guest, dear friend of mine. That like this guy is a turkey slaying, elk hunting, outdoor industry vet, Mr. Rick Taylor. How we doing, buddy? Good. How you guys doing tonight? Excellent. Doing good. So, Rick, it's that time of the year, man. We're turkey hunting. You know, turkey season's already started down in South Florida. I know I'm headed down there. Uh, so, what what does your spring look like for this year? Well, well, I'm uh, I'm taking off a week from Friday, heading down there myself. I'll be down there for for about a week. Awesome. Where Where yeah. are you going? Uh, right around Gainesville area. Okay. Uh, I'll be down there in Gainesville area for three or four days, and then uh, go on further south down into uh, LaBelle and hang out with my buddy Travis for a few days. Awesome. Are you Are you trying to do like a single slam in a season? It works or out. What? Yeah, if yeah. it works out. Um, so I've got Florida on the docket. Uh, I'll be doing Oklahoma and Kansas, and so that's going to be Rio's there. I got to try to slip a Merriam's in here, but uh, that would that would be the only one that I don't have kind of lined up for the season. But uh, I'll, I'll end my my season the latest that I ever have. First week of June, I'll be in in Michigan. So, okay. and then of course okay. Tennessee and Kentucky, right here close to home. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now, four or five states. Nice. Wow. That is that's pretty cool to be in four or five different states at at uh you know, any given time there. Um uh, you know, I've only gotten two of the different species, the the Rio and the Eastern, of course. Um really would like to do the single season slam at some point. I think it'd be super cool to kill one of those mountain birds, uh the old Merriam and then deep south Florida. Osceola, that'd be a whole lot of fun to me. Um, we're going to try to get it next year, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, um, in light of turkey season, you know, with everything coming up, there's a little precursor weekend, youth weekend. What does that mean that's to you true. to have your kids involved in the outdoors and sharing your passion with them? So my, my youngest daughter, for whatever reason, I've, so I've got four kids. My oldest daughter is 24. My youngest is 16 as of uh, February 12th. So and then I have two boys in between. So my oldest son kind of kind of kept the flame alive for, for dear old dad and, and having a boy that really likes to hunt. But uh, my, my youngest daughter came in, kind of surprised me. And, and uh, so she missed her very first turkey at six years old and man something stuck in that little girl's brain and she is just as eat up with it as i am so dad has promised her an elk hunt in colorado for her graduation gift her senior her senior nice. graduation gift so but man i this will be her her last her last two raw for youth season like i said she turned 16 on february 12th so it uh it'll be it'll be the last one we spend as a as a, a youth i suppose sure did uh did your parents get you into hunting or how did you find that fire? Yeah. So I grew up in Indiana for the most part. So I, I, I left there. I was a, a the middle of my junior year in high school, but uh, I grew up on a, on a big farm. I was about an 800 acre farm and, and uh, some of my buddies at school, their, their folks hunted. And, and so I kind of got the, got the passion kind of lit there, but my dad did a little bit of deer hunting, but, crazy thing is, is my dad never killed a deer until about three years ago. He killed a deer with me on the place that I've got here. And, but mm. it, it's funny, you know, I can, I can remember sitting on the floor cross-legged in front of my dad's, the old oak gun case with the glass front, you know, and oh, yeah. dad's got the door open and he's getting the gun out or, he, you know, just, just those, those little core memories where you think back of, of, what's dad doing in the gun case now, you know, those, those kind of <laughs> yeah. things. So that kind of really, really, uh, the bug bit me there, but, uh, I, I think I picked it up and, and ran with it a little bit more than, than, you know, my three brothers and none of them are into it as much as I am. And then, uh, of course kind of passing it on to my kids. So. Hey, that's important right there. You got to hear that story on to your kids. 
got to that's uh that's right. the future of what we love to do is is the younger generation and uh it starts with with our youngins and then we can you know add other people in with that and um uh, you know one thing that i really like is is the new shotgun shell loads they've come out with like the tss and stuff right. like that you know that really helps get these kids out in the woods and and they're not intimidated by a big 12 gauge you know they can actually shoot a 410 and be comfortable with that's it right. and be accurate yeah. with it and things like that you know so um that's what we've started shooting is the tss shot in fact um last year we took a, a kid with um it's called courageous outdoor kids and uh those guys are phenomenal human beings every one of those youngins had something going on with them and you know they were all so joyful and you couldn't tell <clears throat> you would have never known that anything was going on with them you would never know but the tss shot and the different loads that you can get for the 410s gave them the opportunity to kill turkeys at longer distances you know so we had a young man named cole and it was his very first time to hunt very first time to shoot a gun all that stuff so we put it in a bog oh, rod and got it all situated for him uh 410 with that good tss shot in there and let me tell you something. I was saying a prayer in the middle of that hunt. And this was 30 minutes, 40 minutes before any turkey should ever be gobbling. And I said, Lord, today give us dominion over these critters so Cole can, can take his first bird. And when I said give us dominion over them birds, a turkey gobbled right above us. I mean, right above us. Oh, my gosh. I was like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. It sent chills down my back. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, here comes two birds after daylight fly down, putting on a show, strutting, gobbling, spitting, drumming. They did everything. And uh, Cole was able to take his first turkey. And then uh, the next nice. day, he uh, ended up getting a double bearded turkey. His very first two turkey hunts, he tagged out in the first two days. I said, boy, I couldn't be more <laughs> proud. I'm telling you right now, I think I think I was more excited than, than he was, to be honest with you. I mean, I was so he tore up. He probably didn't I, know exactly what had happened. That's awesome. Yeah, man, I was so tore yeah. up. I threw the blind back and just started running. I was like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> but i'll tell you what i think you know, i got you, you more said, out of that go ahead i was just gonna say you know you said that you know these kids get the opportunity to do something that, that they normally wouldn't have the chance to and and you you said that they they don't act like they have anything wrong well yeah. it just just in my mind it made me think you know when i go out and i get the chance to sit against the tree or sit up in a tree and I'm not thinking about anything else. Everything that I worry about when I'm I'm on the job or or I'm on the phone or having to deal with with life, so to speak. Yeah. You get out there and it, it changes everything, and you you wouldn't know that you've got the stress in your life, and and mm -hmm. those kids don't know what they've got going on now because their their mind is enveloped in in what's happening, and and it's a it's a real experience. Yeah, it really yeah, is. It is. You know, I just have to give such a big shout out to the the KOK crew that puts all that together for those youngins to get to go and do that kind of stuff. They get to do a deer hunt. In fact, one of the kids uh, last deer season got to shoot a 170 inch deer, uh, free range, totally free range in South Georgia, uh, laid the hammer down. It was awesome, man. Just wow. to see that get, you know, that's fantastic. I was so pumped for that young and so pumped. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that was just kind of the story I had to tell you right there because it just reminded me of you know this upcoming turkey season. You talking about taking your kids? You know, mine are too young mm -hmm. still. I say that I may take my boy this year for the first time. He'll be three in April, so I think we're going to make a little trip out to the turkey woods uh, and just let him sit by a tree or sit on my lap or something and just hang out, you know, and just have a good time in the woods. There you go. Yeah. Yep, and just watch them scare away a turkey because it'll happen. <laughs> yep, I already planned it. <laughs> Do you have yeah, you any got... any story like that, Rick? Like 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 your kid always eating chips or something in the blind and scaring away deer or anything like you that? You know, I, actually, it's 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 not my kids that did it. So uh, when my wife and I were were first dating, we uh, 
we had this br- brilliant idea. We were going to take the, the, the three <laughs> oldest boys. Uh, so her son and, and my two oldest, we were all, all five of us going to go turkey hunting. And, and, uh, so we went out the night before we went to Walmart to get our, get our snacks for the blind. And, and, uh, I think, I think the boys didn't invite Nikki back after that morning's <laughs> turkey, turkey hunt. So I, I ended up taking the, taking the kids from then on. So she was a good oh, sport though. She was a good sport. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. When she got yeah, that's awesome. Week, that's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, Hey, uh, you know, in all seriousness, at least you do have a, a, a woman that supports your hunting addiction, so to speak. There is, there is no doubt about that. You know, she, she's never been around, uh, hunting for one, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, firearms for that matter. Her dad, dad had a few guns, but, um, my, my addiction is not just, just hunting. It's, it's firearms as well. So, uh, she's, she's come to terms with it, so to speak, but no, <laughs> she is very, very supportive of me. And, and, uh, when yeah. I say, Hey, I got this coming up or whatever, she's like, go have fun. And, uh, I'll be here when you get home, you know, that's it. Yeah, That's I'm I'm takes. the same way. Whenever I met my wife, I I told her one of the first things I was like, if you can get through this hunting season, then we'll be we'll be all there right. There you go. And That's uh, right. you know, spoiler alert, we did. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I remember when I first met her, I had a uh, I had a bird at Wilson's Wilson's Wildlife Artistry, and uh, I told her. Whenever we moved in this house, I said, uh, just so you know, I have a pretty large investment being made right now, and uh, <laughs> I need that to go somewhere. You just need to pick out where it goes. And uh, she she just didn't couldn't fathom how big. She's like, it's just a bird, right? Just this turkey's just just a bird. I don't understand what's so big about it. And then I brought it home, and it's strutting. It's actually hanging up. Kind of, right. kind of like this right. guy exactly yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah wilson's, wilson's has led to the the core <laughs> in my man cave here nice so everything everything around <laughs> me has come from their studio so although nice. those those guys are awesome top top tier but i mean my, maggie just could not fathom that this bird walks in the wild she had never seen it so that's like, right what is this <laughs> and i'm like yeah th- these things live and breathe every day you know <laughs> that's <funny>. right <laughs> Anyway, yeah, and then it ended up in the garage there. And the other night, I said, "Hey, uh, when can I bring that turkey in y'all's house?" <laughs> and, and, and she said, "Go ahead." And I said, "All right, I'll be there soon." <laughs> exactly. That's right. So that's right. I actually, yeah. I've, my uh, deer from this past year is at Wilson. So whenever it comes in, I'll I'll put them both back in the house, and we'll be all hunky dory there. Mm-hmm. There you go. It might have to stay upstairs. They're 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 not downstairs. <laughs> they're all they all get to live up here. So well, there you go. You that's our what? compromise. Exactly. Everybody go. wins, and that's all that matters. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's right. But that's uh, exactly so right. I mentioned in in the intro that you guided elk. I, I I wanted to ask you that. So you guide elk, and and people may find this kind of odd, but you know, you're you're not like out west at an outfitter all year you actually got out in east tennessee can you tell you people know, like how that started yeah so the, the way it got started for me is uh uh johnny allred with tennessee wildlife resource foundation uh the foundation is the group that gets the one ticket or the one um elk tag that is auctioned off every year i take that back so it used to be an auction it used to be on ebay actually and uh, oh, cool. uh once it left eBay, it became a uh, a raffle ticket. So now that that has grown to where they sell a couple million dollars in raffle tickets for an opportunity to shoot an elk in Tennessee. And Johnny had overbooked himself on a weekend uh, or a week that was coming up to where he was supposed to have been guiding a gentleman who won at the time that eBay tag. Uh, at that time, that eBay tag went for eleven thousand one hundred dollars. Is what the fellow paid for that Holy tag. Holy cow! I think that's the second highest uh bid on the on that but uh so the the guy that had bought the tag johnny put me in touch with him and first johnny reached out to me said rick i've overbooked myself any chance you can guide this hunt and i'm like yeah and now at this point i've had elk hunted twice in my life in colorado i've never seen an elk die and uh uh i think i'd only seen just a handful of elk and that was on one of those hunts but uh 
anyways, yeah, I can I can call turkeys and I can mimic an elk. So I, I studied up on exactly what an elk is po- supposed to sound like, right? Um, <laughs> but we spent five or six long days on the mountain, I'm, and the mountain in East Tennessee is is nothing like what out west is. But I will tell you that uh, when we saw that bull coming across the field and and uh, he got the chance to pull the trigger and I saw an elk die in Tennessee, my world changed. And that was the first time I did it. And now I think I've guided nine hunts and I've seen seen six bulls die and one other get shot. So wow. pretty, pretty, pretty high odds out there. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. So, you know, you're talking about being able to call turkeys and different things like that. And there's a lot of similarities in in the calls you use for elk hunting and turkey hunting. Um, So what are the similarities and the differences uh, you have seen between turkey hunting and elk hunting? So there's there's a couple of things that that we kind of laugh about in the, you know, talking to some of my buddies that I elk hunt with and some some of the guys that we we, uh, turkey hunt together too. Um, one of the things we say is if a turkey could smell, you would never kill them. You know, yeah. their, their eyesight is their biggest defense, right? So, uh, on the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the elk, their, their nose is their biggest defense. So, you know, the, the, the one phrase that I picked up is an elk will hear you three times. He'll look at you twice, but he will only smell you once and he'll be gone. So. You know, a, a turkey and an elk both can pinpoint your location to a, a matter of just feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you're calling in a certain location and you you're expecting them to come to where you're at, a uh, lot of lot of similarities there. You know, you're interacting vocally with them, uh, unlike deer hunting. You know, deer hunting, yeah, we can rattle antlers or we can grunt and try to get a response, but uh, you're you're literally trying to mimic the sound of either a hen turkey or, or, or a, a, a bull elk or even a cow elk to try to try to trip the trigger of those critters to get them, get them in range, you know? Uh, so it's, there's a lot of similarity, similarities there. And another, another thing you hear is that, uh, you know, hunting elk is like a, a, a 900 pound uh, turkey on mm-hmm. with four legs. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I have gotten to where I enjoy elk hunting just as much as I do turkey hunting. Oh, yeah, wow, that's, that's kind cool. of my thing is like I would, uh, you know, I've, I've never been elk hunting. I would love to go. And I kind of th- think that's kind of my thing is like, you know, if I love the turkey hunt, I think I would love the elk hunt just as much. Plus, you know, <laughs> if if you get one, I mean, I'm sure your freezer is full of elk meat or, you know, someone's nope. is, you know. Nope. Really? No elk in my freezer. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No, nope, sure they're, ain't. Fresh out. They're, they're, they're on the wall right there, but there's nothing in my freezer. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's that's some of the some of the best uh, meals that I've ever had from anything I've taken out of the woods has been from the elk. Oh man, I, I've had it once. It was delicious. <clears throat> yeah, no, but, elk is one of my know, favorite meals of all time, other than the axis deer. Axis deer actually trumps elk for me. But that's what I've heard, and I've yet to have that opportunity. Man, I'm telling you right now, those axis deer are unbelievable. I could eat my weight in an axis deer every single day, <laughs> every day. You, you know, still but... have some in the freezer bin? No, it's gone. It was gone it's real gone fast. It didn't take long, man. <laughs> I shot that thing, and before I think before the end of the month, I'd eaten half of it. Like that was a meal just about three times a week it was that good and i'm wow. telling you I, I hope i get the opportunity to kill another one you know in, in my lifetime and uh, but i tell you though that elk hunting is something that i really would like to get into i'd like to do it at least once in my life you know to say i've done it you know, i know there's a lot of guys that are um you know hardcore bow hunters for the elk but i want them old boys bring out the rifle and and if they're at 300 yards, <laughs> guess what? I can drop him in his tracks. That 300 wind mag, right. man, it don't, it don't, it don't pull any punches. <laughs> <laughs> that thing just lets it run. of choice to start a rifle hunting for sure. Nice. Do you have a preference That's on awesome. that, Rick? On hunting, whatever archery versus gun? Yeah. So I've I've killed three bulls and and 
those actually have been the last three three trips to Colorado. So I'm I'm kind of a trifecta the last three years in a row. Uh, nice. I've been fortunate to to bring a bull home, but uh, I've I've gone out during during archery season, and, and really the reason why is you know tags for uh, or rifle tags for elk are a little bit different out west. You know, there's a lot of draw hunts and things like that. There's a a couple seasons in Colorado where you can get them over the counter archery is over the counter for most every zone out there so it's really the easiest tag to put your get your hands on so it's, that's during the rut too right yeah and that's that's the biggest thing is you're really in the in the heat of when you're able to interact with them vocally and and get them to flip that switch and and so, hopefully call them in where you want them to be so that's that's, uh, cool. that's the best part of and, and you know muzzleloader i i the muzzleloader season in Colorado is the second week of, of season. You know, the archery is there. The archery is the first week. The second week of when elk season opens is, is a uh, muzzleloader and archery at the same time. But okay. so I think uh, in a year or two, I'll, I'll try to try to get a muzzleloader tag and nice. uh, do that. So. And there's know, some high awesome. power muzzleloaders now that, that would take it down for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, got a few CVAs in the safe down there that, uh, can reach out there so yeah yeah of Thank course you. no doubt about it Hopefully so i'll get an opportunity yeah yeah i hope you do uh so switching gears a little bit the other day i saw you doing some land management on social media for your farm what mm -hmm. kind of land management practices would you share with people that are trying to maybe get started in land management what can they look for what can they expect things like that so it's it's I'm somewhat limited and it's, it's kind of strange to say that because I'm, I'm on a very large piece of property for, for what Tennessee offers. Um, but I'm limited because of how that space is used by the landowner. So they, they have cattle on there. So what I am able to do just food plot wise, uh, for instance, is basically I can only put food where the cows cannot get to. Uh, so I, I've got a piece of dirt that's in between a hay field and a dry creek. The creek only has water in it when it rains. Um, and the fence keeps the cattle out of the hay field, but it doesn't keep them out of the area between the hay field and the creek. And so what I've done is uh, over the years, I think I started about four years ago, uh, I paid a, paid a buddy of mine that had one of the, the mulching heads on a bobcat. And he went in there and, and knocked a big hole in it and, and I uh, started a little food plot there. And over the years, I've, I've been able to make it a little bit bigger. And uh, this this past, uh, I guess it was late summer into the fall, I was able to dig uh, the water hole out a little bit deeper so that it'll it'll hold some water when it when it does rain. And and uh, what you've seen over the last couple couple three weeks, and and even in last month, once. Once trade show season kind of ended, I've been uh, out there, you know, working on fencing a little bit. I was able to set a new new redneck blind up, uh, put a, a protein and, and corn feeder up at one one location there. And, and uh, of course, running trail cameras. But probably the biggest thing this time of year, once I'm home and can have the time to, to dedicate to it, man, I've been running my my dog proof traps, trying to trying to work on the marsupials you know the raccoons <laughs> and the possums and the and the skunks even uh the skunks they 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 get shot from about 50 60 yards out but i'll i'll go back and get that trap later but uh, exactly <laughs> everything else man I'll, I'll run them up and and since the first of this year I've, I've already killed probably a dozen raccoons and you know three or four uh possums and a couple skunks so awesome. and i can I... tell you it's it's made a huge difference on my my turkeys yeah. I was fixing yeah. to ask that. What's the impact that that you've seen from trapping throughout however long you've been trapping for? Yeah, so the the trapping I probably started it about three years ago, and uh, you know I've always had a pretty good turkey population, mm -hmm. but I will tell you that sitting in a deer blind this year and seeing two different flocks of eighteen and twenty longbeards, yo, that was a that was a and and that was the <clears> same <throat> day. So I know it was two different flocks. Um, it's, it's definitely making a, a big difference on, on what's happening there. Nice. And that's yeah, one thing, I just you know, we've been trapping. trying to, yeah, we've then, been trying to put an emphasis yeah. on trapping, you know, with, with yeah. everything that we've been talking about and, you know, on this podcast, we're really trying to share with people, Hey, you know, 
you won't, you're, you're worried about your turkey numbers and you're not doing anything about it. If you're worried about it, go trap, yep. trap them raccoons, trap That's the right. possums and the skunks and all that stuff. That's what's eating majority of your nest is those marsupials 100%. right there. I mean, that, that's where it all starts, you know, and, and I, I, I mean, people wonder, well, why did they drop the limit in Tennessee? Well, because the bird numbers are dropping because nobody's trapping anymore. Right. You know, you got there, you yep. got, it's a vicious cycle that you have to dive into. You have to keep that going. And, and me and John talk about this all the time. It's like, well, you know, catching one raccoon could save a whole nest of poults. I mean, it could, one raccoon could save right. a whole nest of poults. On top of that, coyotes, and that's that's yeah. another big deal. So this is a working cattle farm, so we have a a lot of coyotes, and and where I'm at up there in the East Tennessee area, uh, I've got a lot of hogs as well. So USDA mm-hmm. is kind of helping with the hog numbers. They they will run a trap on the place every now and then. I run a trap, and uh, recently they've been actively shooting them with, from the air with a helicopter, which unfortunately I can't get into with them. But yeah, <laughs> that's that's their I'm deal. But uh, yeah, I've got a <laughs> I've got a thermal, so they're they're going to be out tomorrow night. I may may get out there with them tomorrow night, but uh, nice. yeah, man. So last year during during the uh, just during turkey season, uh, a neighbor and myself uh, ran traps and actively hunted and killed coyotes, and we killed thirteen coyotes off the farm wow. just during turkey season last year. Wow! So wow. you know, and, and you know, we talk about just going back to the raccoons. You know, the investment in doing that buy two or three traps you don't have to have a dozen traps or 20 traps no. you know that, that 15 bucks a piece go get your some some cheap dollar store um cat food and some mm-hmm. little bitty marshmallows yep that's all it takes yeah yep, it's exactly. a it's yep. a small investment for a very great return I yeah agree. you know that's what uh john has started trapping lately and um he's he's had some pretty good luck with it hadn't you john Oh yeah, I've I've caught uh, I think four or five raccoons, dude. I, I bought a whole new twenty two just to be my cat coon, my uh, <laughs> rac- raccoon getter, man. I love it. Uh, well, really, yes. you know, it was it was just an excuse to buy another gun. You know, really is what it was. But I, 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 I read was, through that absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, I did too. I was like, listen, <laughs> honey, this twenty two I have isn't good enough. I need a brand new one. That's right. And yeah, so I got it. And anyway. <laughs> no. can't ever have too and many it does guns. it works it uh it works very effectively i have to say there you go <laughs> of course but uh no man you know I, I'm, I'm really excited to see because this is the first time that that i've done it so you know i'm sure i won't see it until obviously the next group of poults comes about but i'm, I'm really excited to see how my turkey numbers just jump because I'm, I'm the same way i uh, plant a chufa field which, by the way, Rick, if you've never planned a chufa, dude, <laughs> oh my God, you need to. It it should be illegal. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's it, it works that good. It should not be allowed. But if it is, I'm gonna do it. So anyway, I plant this chufa field, and I mean, I got my father-in-law and his first long beard, my brother. I got myself a bird. I mean, it was just like clockwork. They came in, you know, strutting and gobbling and all this and that and the other. So I've got a good population, but I'm just hoping kind of the same case as yours. I'm hoping it just gets better and better. All right. Let me know when you're starting to plant. The other way you can join me over there and we can uh, try out your chufa field at my place. Hey, dude, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, dude. It's a game changer. I've I've got Ben on it. He He's going to mm-hmm. do it the next time he plants. It's, yep. I'm telling I'm trying to tell everybody while it's still legal. <laughs> plant it, man. Plant yep. it. There you go. Oh, it works, man. I saw... <laughs> So man, I'll just tell you a little backstory here. So John <laughs> had me out to help him plan a couple <laughs> years ago, right? And I think, okay, you know, we're going to use a spreader, whatever, or any any kind of implement, you know, that we can use. Well, didn't have the right drive shaft that day for the for the spreader, and yeah, he shows I did up. Have one, he did have <laughs> one, but it was the wrong one. And he shows up with this grain cart full of fertilizer, fertilizer buggy. <laughs> I mean, that dude put the perfect amount of fertilizer on there. He did it right. It was awesome. And then we get to spreading the seed, and it was all by hand. I said, John, oh, I yeah. am never doing this again. 
<laughs> I said next now time. How big of a spot are we talking? An acre. Uh, half, yeah, if I say around an acre, yeah. 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 But John likes to overseed. So he bought like 25 bags of hey, everything. Man. I mean, hey, you got to do it, right? That's right. <laughs> he just conned yeah. me into you know, doing some good Some of it's got to take at some point, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And you know what? The birds have got to eat some, the crows, all that crap. So that's you right. Gotta oversee yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. So I told him next time we were going to use Whoa. the whirly bird or I'm going to bring a planting rig up there. We'll do it that way. <laughs> yeah. I just went and made the hundred dollar investment to get the right drive shaft so it works properly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it works well, I'm doing everything really. by hand if it makes you feel better. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. I, oh, good. It's uh it's just a just I think I'm doing between a half and three quarter of an acre right now is all I'm doing, but it's it's in the right area. The way that everything lays out, I'm uh, it's a long flat bottom with a creek in the bottom and then everything around it is kind of so I'm in a in a bowl. So mm-hmm. everything oh, nice. comes to the hay field, and from the hay field, they're making it into my plot and my little water hole as well. So it's oh, kind nice. of the right That's layout, nice. but uh, you you can yeah. never have too much food. I feel like though, so no, hey, trying yeah. to trying to expand that a little bit more too. Well, and see, yeah, no. the thing that Ben's not bringing up is Ben is a agronomist by trade, so he is like the the perfect rose so far apart oh. so far this way. <laughs> Where me, I'm like just spread it on the dirt and hope it grows, baby. You know, I don't That's care right. as yep. long as it grows. Yeah. And Ben's like, no, 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 dude. 18 inch rows, 24, <laughs> this by this. I'm like, buddy, you're speaking Spanish, dude. I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I, I have learned a lot from him for sure. Oh well, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's why, it's, uh, that's why some teach. So that's what, and that's some what learn, I went to school right? for. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. that's what I did. That's what I do. That's my trade is is agronomy and soil. And you know, I just like to make sure that I grow the right food and enough food for all these critters. Because you know, I, me and John talked about this a while back. Is you know, even on your deer population, you know, everybody wants some giant hundred and seventy inch bucks and all that stuff. But it starts with your does and your fawns. That's where it starts. Right there, because if true. you're not dropping farms, you're not you're you're starting. That's your five year plan, five six year plan. Right there is every fall buck fawn that drops. So you know you got to start with mama taking care of her, making sure she has the right nutrients, making sure that she can provide the right milk and everything else to give that fawn the chance, you know, to to make it and do what it's genetically inclined to do. And I always have this phrase: not every deer is genetically inclined to be a giant. But it's genetically inclined to end up in my freezer. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. We need to put that on a t shirt fast. Yeah. Somebody somebody will get it. Exactly. I just came up with that one. We're going to have to make that a shirt. For sure. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, hold on. What's up? I was gonna say, hold on, I need to uh, type type a letter of uh, of uh, <laughs> oh. proof that that's my idea, yeah, of course, yeah. and, and mail mail it to myself. They call that a poor man's patent on that. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. We have video proof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I've I've got a. So, if someone like myself is going to South Florida for one of the first times. What's the, you know, I know you've been going for a few years now. What's like something that you would tell someone to kind of look out for, or, you know, it, it's so different over here than it is wherever you're from. Like, like what, what does someone need to know going into South Florida? Someone like me, who's not only been once. Every, every, everywhere you sit, something is going to poke you. Everywhere you walk there's a chance that something could bite you. And if you're anywhere around swamps, there, there's always a chance of gators. And sounds great. Thermocell is the one thing you don't leave home without. Do, do yeah, the that's... birds themselves act any different? Or, I mean, is, is an Eastern and Osceola kind of go hand in hand? Uh, no. So okay. one thing about Osceola's and and the one thing that I've noticed about Osceola's is they will gobble quite a bit on the limb, but when they hit the ground, they're, they're not as vocal as an Eastern. Um, and I don't know if that's because of where they're at. You know, there's, there are 
mountain lions in Florida, mm -hmm. cats, there's big cats. Um, there's coyotes, there's, there's all kinds of things in that area that, that are wanting to kill a turkey, you know, from the time they're, they're an egg, right? They're, they're being destroyed from, from egg to full grown, um, maturity. But, um, I don't know where my train of thought was going with that, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the whole area down there is completely different from, from swamps to, you know, just, just the tree that you're leaning against. I mean, half the time you're leaning against a, a palm tree. It's not like a good smooth bark oak tree. You know, you're, you're kind of digging <laughs> your back into the palm there. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a different world down there for sure. Oh man. Well, I'm, I'm definitely excited to go. I'm picking up my brother. He lives at the halfway point in the bottom of Georgia and we're going to go, we're going to go hit up some public hey. land and to see, see if we can't get it done. I was going to ask you, what's, what's anyway. your plan? Yeah. So we're, what, what, we're going to hunt. You? Um, uh, let's see. Big, big Cypress, I think it's called. I couldn't tell you what part of Florida that is other than yep. South. It's big Cypress. That's way South. Yep. So, so we I, are I driving spent a, down I spent there. a few nights in my truck oh, last yeah? year. Yep. I heard one is turkey it, gobble that was ooh. probably a mile from where I was and had no idea how to try to get to him. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, because listen, three I, days am not, I, am, I am not walking through some swamp to get to a turkey there. It is not happening. <laughs> nope, not doing yeah, it. Yeah, it will. Mm. I, I will tell you, it will challenge your mentality as a turkey hunter to <clears> go – set foot in in big cypress and i, I wish yeah. you all the best and i hope you both kill one because you will earn it if you do yeah that's kind yeah. of the vibe that i've gotten from just doing doing all the research and you know because and i and and i've looked into doing some outfitters and you know i got nothing against any outfitter but it's like you know i don't i don't have two three grand to go drop on an outfitter for a bird so i'm like well public land it is baby here we go yeah, so that's the uh, you uh, chat about it later. Yeah. I'll I'll give you a couple of pins of where I've been down there and whether or not that helps you or not. But uh, I can get you. It I can ain't get gonna you hurt. started anyway. That's yeah. right. Hey, listen, I'm telling you. You know, Ben, there there was a time me and Rick hunted together. I was I was young and dumb. I'm still young and dumb, but I was younger and dumber. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Rick Rick took me out. We uh, we went out on this lease near near where uh he he lives and uh anyway we went out there and we had this bird goblin and you know he here's this seasoned guy he's like all right birds goblin and i'm just excited because i'm hearing a bird gobble. i'm like dude this is the first bird i've heard gobble all year he's like well heck if you're happy i'm happy let's, let's roll <laughs> so you know <laughs> we ended up just doing i don't even really remember what happened i'm sure we did i mean obviously we didn't get one but it, it was still you know a fun time it kind of you know, kind of to bring it back to take, taking kids out. Like, you know, it's it's stuff like that, that like, you know, I'm sure Ben has done that. I know I've done that with some like wounded veterans and kids. Like it may not seem like a big deal to you in the moment, but like to me as a 16 year old, this guy that was in the industry, right. That was a big thing for me. It was like, was willing to go with me and, you know, had a turkey goblin and it, it was a cool deal for me. So I just needed you to know that, but I still remember that. I appreciate that. You know, I've, I've seen the meme here lately. I think, uh, the Lindsay way may have posted it. It's something to the effect of, uh, you know, what, why do you want to take a kid hunting or what, what does it matter? Well, it, it matters to that one kid, you know, and that's, that's the big yeah, thing, man. It, it may not be a big deal to you doing it, but it's, it could be the world to somebody else. Just, and that's, that's a something to think about in life. You know, it, it may not be a big deal to smile at that stranger or wave at that guy that's crossing the street in front of you or whatever, but, to that sure. person, it may be a big deal. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Is. You know, I mean, very true. My uh, my uh, day job at the moment, I deal with the public a lot, and uh, you know, it's the same kind of concept. It's like, hey, man, to that customer, this is the only interaction, even though it's your thousandth of the day. You know, to them, it's the one. So yeah, it's it's, it's the same thing in life, or you know, or kid hunting or whatever. It's like you know you that you know for you that was probably your thousandth gobble you heard that year for me it was my my one you know so it was a yeah it was a cool cool uh ordeal there i'm glad to be a yeah, part of it man i i enjoy it and, and mm -hmm. every chance i get you know 
Absolutely. Heck, it sounds to me yeah. like we all three need to get in the turkey woods together. At some point, I'm going to let you tw twist my arm, guys. Here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. John will cook. Uh, yeah, hey, listen. And, and you know, Rick knows that he, he, he was at the restaurant whenever we owned it. So, mm -hmm. that's right. He knows. That's right. He knows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, Ben, I've got one more question for uh, Rick here, and then yeah, I'll man. let you kind of ask, ask whatever else you got. So, yeah, man. <clears throat> Whenever I said, you know, you were kind of a seasoned guy, it's like, uh, obviously you've been in, in, in hunting for a while. You've been in the industry doing your thing. Uh, how, how much have you seen the industry and just hunting in general change over the years that you've been in it? Like really, really in it. Oof, man. Um, that's, that's kind of, a, kind of a tough one. It's tough, but it's not. It's almost it, the, the the tough thing is answering it maybe politically correct. Um, but gotcha. what fun? What fun is that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you answer it however you want to. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it like this, and yeah, we're on a podcast. Yeah, it's on the internet, and that has been probably what I will say one of the biggest <clears throat> tools that has effectively put hunters against each other yeah. more than coming together sometimes you know i totally agree. you just get on any turkey hunting page and talk about tss or get on any deer hunting page and talk about shooting a crossbow and see where that conversation goes it doesn't take but about mm -hmm. three comments mm -hmm. to see how quickly we can come become divided on such a Really, I mean, to break it down, it's it's really not that important, you know. No. I, 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 I'm 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 kind of a bourbon guy, and and one of the one of the things when you get around other bourbon guys and you start talking is is uh you know how do you like your bourbon? Do you like it neat, or do you like it with an ice cube, or or whatever? Mm -hmm. And 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 I said this not too long ago on another podcast. You know, the the best way to drink bourbon is the way you like it, and the best exactly. way to hunt is legally. You know, I don't have to do yeah. it the way you do it, Ben. I don't have to, John, you don't have to do it the way I do it. If it's legal exactly. and mm -hmm. in, in your, so, so the legal and ethical line can become it blurred, kind of blur. right? It's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's legal to shoot a turkey off the, off the limb <clears> in Tennessee. How many, how many seasoned guys do you know that are going to do that? Zero. There's, there's the ethical part, right? Yeah. So yeah. if it's legal and you can enjoy it, mm -hmm. man, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to cut the shirt off your tail to, to tell you no. you shouldn't do it that way. Well and, and get and out you there know, and take take somebody <clears throat> Exactly. Because exactly. yeah. listen, and all the stories that we've been saying about whether it's your daughter or the courageous kid, not one part of that story was well, I made sure they were using TSS or I made sure she wasn't shooting a crossbow. Or, no, we were outside. We were hunting. That's what the story was. Yep. That's right. That's it. That's right. And yeah. you were creating so, yeah. a core moment in somebody's life is what you were doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you know, I'm right I, there with you. It's like, yeah. who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, my thing is, 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 you know, if you've got enough time to sit there and worry about how somebody else is killing something, you're probably a little bit jealous that they've killed something bigger than you. Or maybe they've had more success, you know, but I mean, hey, you know, the thing of it is, is at the end of the day, it's food, period. That's just all it is. That's right. You know, it's not a, it's not this thing where you get to go out and, and bash other people for the way they hunt, you know, if it makes them excited and tickles yeah, their antlers, fancy. Antlers are pretty, but. Yeah. Yeah. They don't fill your belly. Mm -hmm. Antlers are nice, but you can't, you can't eat them. That's right. No, nope, you can't eat them. You know, I mean, I yeah, that's like probably, the, that's probably the yeah, the the yeah. biggest change I think is is the internet and and the way it has created a lot of division. Mm -hmm. But on the on the other end of the spectrum, it's also given people the chance to get out there a little bit. You know, I I wouldn't have met half the people that I've I've interact with in the industry 
if it hadn't been for the internet or Facebook or Instagram or, mm-hmm. or whatever it is, you know, trade shows and, and things like that. So uh, they're, they're, there's both ends of the spectrum and, and it's a matter of how you use that tool to make it effective in, in whatever your, your purpose in life is. Yeah, I agree Absolutely. with you a hundred percent, you know, and, um, same goes for duck hunting. You know, you got these folks that only shoot mallards and, and that's fine. If that's what you want to do, hammer down. I like shooting them all. If it comes in the decoy spread and it does it right and it's legal to kill it, I'm going to kill it <laughs> and then I'm going to eat it. That's what I'm going to do. I am not a purist by any means. Um, but you know, it all just, <laughs> it's a catch 22, you know, it, it really is. Um, because you got everybody against something like even using decoys for turkey hunting, you know, people are like, Oh man, that's cheating right there. Okay. Well, if cheating's feeding my family, yeah. then that's fine. It's legal. So, I mean, that's what we eat is wild. Exactly. Game. You know, we don't, we don't go to the go. grocery store and buy beef. We eat deer. We eat turkeys. We eat fish that I've killed or that I've caught. That is what we eat. Yep. You know, I'm not out there trying to, you know, make this statement of, well, you know, I'm a master hunter. You know, I can call with the best of them because <laughs> I'm not the best turkey caller in the woods. But I will use every tool in my toolbox to get the job done. And if that's using yep. a decoy or whatever method that is legal, then I'm going to do it. You know, because at the end of the day, I Here's- love turkey nuggets. <laughs> That's right. Here's another T-shirt idea that you can't have because I'm already working on it. But in, in relation to turkey hunting, it's <laughs> just just what you were saying. If it if it's legal, so it's call them, crawl them, sneak them, or deke them. I'm gonna call them in. Yes. I'm gonna crawl on them. I'm gonna sneak up yep. on them, or I'm gonna use a decoy yep. to kill them. I don't care if it's legal. Yep. Hey, I'm I'm out there exactly. to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you don't get up at four o'clock in the morning, load your truck with shells and shotgun and camo and everything to go out there and, and listen to a turkey. Your intent is to go out there and kill a turkey. Yeah. That's your intent. Yeah. Yeah, all day. Yeah, I'm oh. going to bring home the bacon. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm doing. Yeah, man. So I've got one more question for you and uh, kind of curious. Yeah, what man. is your go-to turkey call? Out of all the calls you can use, what's your go-to? Mm, I'm, I'm probably a, a mouth call diaphragm guy. I, I'm, that's that's kind of my go-to because it's just something lightweight. <clears throat> you can t- throw two or three in your pocket and and just go. You know, I, I've mm-hmm. kind of uh, ventured away from carrying a big heavy vest. I used to carry the big vest and put as much in it as I can. And and uh, over the last, uh, I guess last year may have been the first year, but uh, I found this this pack that's almost like a, a bino harness that carries you know a couple uh, slight calls on the front with a couple. Uh, strikers and it's got pockets for the binos and and even a, a box call or I actually shove my thermosel in the box call pocket so I've I've kind of scaled oh, back nice. on everything that I carry but I'll always always have a have a mouth call with me. That's awesome. I love a little mix of everything, but yeah. mouth calls seem to be the ones that you can finish them with a little bit easier because you don't have as That's much right. hand motion yep. there. You know when you're uh, when they're exactly trying to right. get into the range you want them want to shoot them at. Yep. And then you can, sure. you know, one thing about a mouth call is, is you can, you can throw your voice, you know, turn, use your hand and, and make it sound like the hens over here or whatever, if that, that bird's cutting, however you, you need to, need to pull them across either you're calling for someone or calling for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's a lot more versatile than the other calls. So definitely from, from long range to, like you said, finish, finish them on that last 20 yards, you need them to close the distance. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I love it. Well, I'm sure like everybody else, we're all excited to get in the woods. I know I am. Uh, so, Rick, where can everybody find you at, man? Uh, of course, Facebook's just Rick Taylor. Uh, Instagram, it's Tennessee Turkey Hunter, but there are no vowels. So it's T-N-T-R-K-Y-H-N-T-R. So Tennessee Turkey Hunter on Instagram. Gotcha. What's your daughter's? I know I know she's got something. I've been seeing it out there. Yeah, like her uh, too. outdoors. Yep, outdoors with Briley, and Briley is B R Y L E I G H. So outdoors with Briley. Awesome, awesome. And as always, guys, subscribe, share. We're we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, anywhere that you listen to a podcast. As always, check out our sweet merch. Uh, Rick, don't steal our T-shirt ideas, and uh, 
we'll be in business. So thanks again, guys, for listening. Rick, thanks again, brother, for being on. And let's go yeah, kill thanks, turkey. Sir. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Right, well, with Later. that, the redneck is out. Redneck is out. Yeah. First over here, finish my bourbon. There you go. For all things Rooted Podcast and Rooted Television, and I mean hats, shirts, hoodies, and other merch, check out our friends at CH Lone Star Pro and the link that is in our description.